Hi, welcome to another lesson with Dr. Hill. Today we're talking about electrical current. Uh, in our last video we talked about voltage and uh, in this series on electronic circuits and today we're talking about current. Now current is a little bit tricky. The, the relationship between voltage and current can be a little bit tricky to get clear in your head. Remember that voltage is the push, the amount of pressure that uh, is behind the movement of the electricity. Current, on the other hand, is the amount of it. It's the amount of charge that, that passes through a, a wire uh, per second. So uh, you can think about the smallest unit of charge in, in electricity is the electron, which has one charge, one negative charge unit. And uh, that's a very small amount. An electron's a tiny wee thing, and it's a very small amount of electricity. So in actual fact, for us to get anything working, we need something around uh, a, billion, a billion billion electrons passing a wire uh, in a second. Now that's a certain amount of current. If we uh, get uh, half a billion electrons moving through a current, we have a very small, uh, moving through a wire, we have a very small amount of uh, current. So it's the number of electrons passing through the wire in a second. Now. This is where it becomes a little bit tricky for those of us who are chemists and uh, understand something about electrons because uh, electrons in, in electricity actually move from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal of a battery. That's the direction that electrons move in. Um, so that's really the direction of the charge movement. But uh, in conventional electricity, for historical and for practical reasons, we visualize current as being positive from the positive end of the battery to the negative end of the battery. It doesn't matter whether you have a positive or a negative sign on it, you still have a certain amount of electricity. So we consider current, electrical current in electrical circuits to go from the positive end of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery, right? So that seems a bit confusing, but we don't need to worry about it when we're talking about electronics. Let's forget electrons for the moment and just think of uh, the, the, the charge, the current, as the amount of electricity that passes along a wire. So electricity can only pass through conducting materials. Um, because it requires the movement of particles, and those particles have to be able to move through the material, then uh, certain materials don't allow those particles to move past. And uh, you're probably well aware that electrical wires, most of the electrical wires you see um, in, in systems, uh, have a plastic sheath around them. Yeah. So inside the plastic sheath is the metal wire, and metals are very good conductors of electricity. And ele electrical current passes very nicely through metals, thank you very much. And it passes through some metals much better than other metals. Um, it passes better through copper, for example, than it does through iron, which is why copper is used for a lot of our uh, electrical wires. And you'll find that uh, most uh, high quality electrical wires are, are made with copper. Uh, gold is a very good conductor of electricity, but it's also very expensive. So it's only used sometimes for the very terminals, connections between two devices, things like that. So those are conductors. The plastic coating on, a, uh, on an electrical wire is uh, non-conducting. Electricity cannot pass through it. So you can pick up a wire that's coated in rubber that maybe has many, many, many volts going through it and a very high current going through it. And uh, it can't get to you because it's covered with a rubber coating. That, that current is trapped inside the wire and cannot pass from the wire into your hands because there's an insulator in between. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to summarize all of that information and then uh, I'm going to introduce you in the next lesson to a little circuit we can use as a test circuit and we'll use it to test different materials to see whether they are conductors of electrical current or they are insulators that don't allow electrical current to pass and you'll be able to do this test uh, with the circuit. So um, let's just have a look at the summary information first. Um, I'm uh, just going to switch over here to the board. So current 
Current is the flow of electricity. It's the, the flow of electricity, the, the, the electrons, the actual particles that carry electricity flowing through the circuit and the amount of them. Okay. It's carried by moving electrons, but we're not going to worry too much about electrons. But the more electrons you have, the more current you have. All right. Now, current's measured in amps, and one amp is uh, 15 billion billion electrons passing through a wire, a, part, a certain point in a wire, in a second. So it's a rate, the, the measurement of, of current. So it's a rate. It's electrons per second. Okay. Yeah, essentially an amount. Um, the electrons can move through conductors, but they cannot move through insulators. And we're going to test this in our next experiment with our circuit. We're going to build a circuit that um, can test uh, conductivity of different materials. All right. The, uh, the current moves in, in, in electronics terms, the, cur the current moves from the positive electrode of the battery to the negative. So when we talk about current, we are always talking about Electricity flowing this way is a simple circle with a light bulb in it, and it flows from the positive to the negative. The particles that carry charge, which are the electrons, are actually moving the other way, but that's not called current. That's just the direction the electrons are moving. It seems confusing, but we don't need to worry about that unless we're doing chemistry, all right? Uh, or possibly some higher end physics. But this we are going to worry about. So current will be a positive value if it's moving from the positive to the negative. All right. Now the symbol for current is a capital I. Uh, and the unit is the ampere, which is named after a dude. Uh, shortened to amp very often. So we'll see five amp fuses, that sort of thing. And uh, it has the symbol A as well for the unit. All right. So just to summarize uh, this lesson, because we'll come on to our building, our designing our uh, circuit for testing conductivity in the next lesson. Just to summarize this lesson, it's, it's important to remember that electricity is divided up into voltage. It, it has three components, voltage, current, uh, uh, and then the, there's the rate at which that current can flow, which is controlled by resistance. And there's a relationship between these three things. And we'll talk about resistance in a future lesson. You can think about resistance as basically being some kind of tap. If your voltage is your water pump uh, and your current is your water flowing through the pipe, then a tap that you have on the, uh, on, on the pipe that opens and closes to either make the pipe wide open or very narrow is a resistor. And we can uh, adjust the amount of electrons, the amount of water that flows through that pipe by adjusting the resistor. We haven't changed the voltage. Okay, so um, current is the flow of electricity. It's measured in amps and it's a rate. It's the amount of electricity that passes a certain point in the wire in a second. All right, so uh, we'll get on to our conductivity test in the next lesson. And uh, I, uh, I hope you followed that. If you didn't ask me any questions in the comments below or in class when I see you. All right.